Hello and welcome to the Philippines. I may be treading in uh, dangerous territory here today, but uh, it shouldn't be. There should be a discussion. And I'm going to talk about uh, life's relationships. And I'm going to talk about uh, training your partner and being trained by your partner. Especially in areas where there's a difference in cultures. Uh, you know, it's uh, there's a lot of that takes place even in your own culture. You have even if you uh, meet somebody from a from a different school, different background, different educational background, different ed uh, economic background, uh, the, they're used to different foods. Uh, they have a different accent. <laughs> they speak in a different way, and uh, you learn from each other. Uh, there there can be a lot of misunderstanding initially, uh, especially when you're dating somebody from a different culture different language, different culture, different religion, different values, uh, different understanding of history, if there's any, if there's, uh, any common uh, knowledge of history at all. Something that you will find in, uh, as you travel around the world, different peoples have a, a different uh, view of history. Uh, you know, I'm from, I'm from the United States of America, often called Americans, North Americans more specifically. Uh, and we include Canada there. Uh, but the Americans tend to be very American-centric. Even the news, uh, most of the news, almost everything you get is centered around America. And you'll hear that oftentimes from Americans. You'll hear it from other people around the world. Uh, but anyway, we're going to talk about your partner, training your partner. And... Uh, I have, a, a part of this is based on my experience, part of it based on uh, what other expats have told me, what their experiences have been. Let me suggest that if you are very passive at the beginning of your relationship, uh, you are the one who is going to be trained. Uh, but if you take a more active role in, in teaching and training and interacting with your partner, uh, there's going to be more of a point where you compromise someplace in the middle in accepting uh, each other's cultures. Along with that uh, cultural difference is the age difference that is often the case in the Philippines and some other Southeast Asian countries. Uh, this person, uh, oftentimes a female, is going down a road in her life with her family and her friends and uh, all of a sudden you come along, a foreign, as they often call foreigners, a foreign. I've had one girl say, I've, I've, never, I've never been around a foreign, so this is my first experience to, to have a foreign. And uh, it is a unique experience and something that they hadn't, many of them hadn't planned on, but it's uh, one of those things. Life happens while you're planning it. And uh, many of them uh, are interested in finding out what a foreign is all about. If you are going to travel overseas looking for romance, uh, I suggest that you study up on the, the local culture. And that can even change from uh, across different parts of countries for that matter. Uh, but anyway, you are, you are advised to uh, know a little bit about the culture and uh, because they think differently. It's like uh, expat <laughs> It's been here for about a week, told me the other day, he says, uh, it's like I've landed on a different planet. And indeed, uh, you can get that feeling at times. Uh, the, the people thing, the smells, the sights, the, uh, the language, uh, everything, the values, uh, the noise. Love is a journey with more than a few curves and bumps along the way. Most of you know that already from experience. And... Uh, my strong suggestion is you, you take some time and you, you write down some of the things that uh, you're hoping for and expecting and uh, things, that, uh, things that are very important to you, other things that uh, would irritate the heck out of you. Mutual interests is one area that uh, might be very important uh, to uh, early on understand is that important to you? Now, there are, there are many relationships where uh, the couple does not have many mutual interests, and they, they each have their own group of friends. They each go do their own thing, and then they, they're 
back together whenever they're back together and they enjoy that time together. Uh, in my case, my last girlfriend, I've had a couple since I've been here in the Philippines, uh, she had absolutely no interest in learning to swim. And uh, for that matter, uh, she felt that travel was a waste of time and never could make time to travel. And uh, she said, it's too expensive and it takes too much energy. On the rare occasions we did take a day trip, uh, she was always in a hurry to get back home. And so there was little time really to relax and enjoy the time together. One girl I knew for about a month, uh, <laughs> she was a night person. I'm neither a night person nor a, day, a morning person. I'm a day person. And I kind of fit in the middle there. And anyway, she would want to go out and do karaoke later at night or uh, go someplace, go to a bar or... I go, go eat late at night, and she was quite insistent that I try to only eat Filipino foods, and that just wasn't going to work for me. Early on, I understood that I had a bit of a conflict uh, in, my, in my own self. Uh, I wanted to uh, understand and experience the culture uh, to a degree. I wanted to immerse myself in the culture. And yet at the same time, I didn't want to give up many of the things that I liked, uh, the, the, the music, the food, uh, the values, uh, those types of things. And I determined that it was early, uh, very important early on in a relationship to try to influence the other person and uh, to also be open to uh, learning from them about their culture, their foods, their values, their way of life. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my girlfriend. <laughs> Another dangerous step I'm going to make here. Uh, but anyway, I met her on a dating site, as a matter of fact. Went over and uh, we, we met at a lechon place and uh, had some lechon and spent a couple hours together that first time. I didn't see her for about another week or so. And uh, anyway, I've known her now for about uh, six, seven months. And uh, early on, I, I asked her, what surprises you? What surprises you about a foreigner? You know, you've been around me for a while. And uh, she said, well, you don't holler at me, which I don't. I don't, I don't find hollering very productive at all. Uh, and the fact that I cook, and I, I enjoy cooking. And uh, the amazing thing and the good thing is that she took a big interest. She was very trainable, let me put it that way. And uh, not to offend anybody in using that term, uh, you know, teaching or, or training, but she was very interested, uh, inquisitive mind. And I would start cooking and she would come over and watch what I was doing and ask me what I was doing and how I was doing it, why I was doing it. Um, and uh, she has actually become a pretty good cook. And she looks up recipes online, and she she actually experiments and comes up with uh, some very interesting recipes herself. And 99% uh, of the time, they're quite tasty, as a matter of fact. I will tell you about one conflict, ongoing conflict, uh, that uh, we have, and it, it's a bit of a give and take. Uh, it, it has never become a tug of war, uh, but is that we both like to be in charge, and uh, we both like to <laughs> determine the course of things, and uh, it is a, a, a little bit, not cat and mouse, but it is give, give and take, uh, but as she, she's come in, I've had a, a, another person too come in and start rearranging my house right away just uh, rearranging my cupboards and, and uh, throwing out the little rugs I have and, 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 and wanting to replace them with something else. Uh, but anyway, she's done a very good job at uh, organizing my shelves, for instance, and my cookware. Uh, when we moved into this place, she come, came in and she has a regular job too. She took a couple days off and uh, we did a real thorough cleaning job. So she's, she's She's clean like me. When I move into a place, I want to clean it very well before I even start moving some things in. And uh, 
but uh, and 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 I've had that discussion early on. I've I've said, you know, you we have we have a little problem. I like to be in charge, and you like to be in charge. So we're going to have to deal with that, and we do. We do. I I watch her. If she doesn't, if I don't like uh, the way she does something, uh, we discuss it. And likewise, she tells me if, why why she does some something a certain way. And okay, I understand that now. Like so many Filipinos who live so close to the water most of their lives, she does not know how to swim. But the good thing is she's not afraid of water, and she's been in the water, and uh, she's willing to learn to swim, and uh, that will happen eventually, I think. Um, she also understands and that I like to walk. In fact, we were over on Mac Tan, and it was during rush hour traffic, and I suggested, well, we can walk across the bridge, and it's it's a good kilometer more across the bridge. And from where we were, probably a couple of kilometers, and uh, she said, okay. And I'm not sure if she really appreciated it, but she's, she's willing to walk. We have walked from uh, my condo over to Ayala, and different times we've taken walks, and uh, she understands the health benefits of that. And, uh, you know, it gives you time to, to, to talk, too. If you're in a taxi uh, or if you're busy doing other things, you don't have as much time to talk as when you're just walking. Early on, I understood that uh, she liked music and uh, was actually a pretty good singer, and I decided to uh, test her to attempt to uh, introduce her, to train her uh, to the types of music that I liked. And I turned on some of the, the music that I enjoyed, looked it up on uh, the internet, uh, some jazz and blues and uh, a little country, uh, pop. Of course, uh, people all over the world uh, hear the American pop uh, from over the years. Uh, Dwight Yoakam put that on. And... Uh, she enjoyed all of it, and uh, so that was a good sign. So very little training required there. She enjoyed that. I've had a, a couple other people and groups of people, uh, Filipinos, I've uh, turned some of that stuff on. They said, what is that? It's the worst thing they'd ever heard. They'd never heard anything like it in their life. So uh, if that is important to you, that could be an issue. She works, which is a good thing for me, because I think I personally would go nuts if I had somebody around me 24 hours a day. Uh, and th there are two issues with, with uh, the Filipinos here, is that wh if they have a job and they work, they often work many days, oftentimes six days a week, sometimes seven days a week. And so they get, and they work a lot of times, a lot of hours, eight hour day is probably a short day. They might work 10 or 12 hours a day, a lot of them. Uh, so you have those kind of issues. Now, if they're traveling very far, uh, of course, you've got travel time. But uh, anyway, she has never uh, spent a lot of time on, on the phones, uh, texting, and uh, all that sort of thing. And so we communicate when we need to communicate. Uh, I met an expat the other day, and he showed me on his phone. He said he had met a girl. Uh, like twice, I think. And he said, look, I've already got 49 texts from her on my phone. You know, where are you? What are you doing? It's all day long. And, uh, you know, the, I think Filipinos are still the most textingest nation, nation in, in the world, I believe. Cost one peso to send a text here. About two U.S. cents. The first girl I met here was constantly, if we went any place, was constantly uh, taking selfies. Or here, take my picture here, take my picture here, here, take my picture here, taking selfies of her or and her friends if, if they were along. And that, it, you know, you just can't, uh, it's, it's rather difficult to enjoy the trip when uh, you're spending all time with people taking selfies uh, and or them asking you to take pictures so that they can have a few more thousand pictures of themselves. I'm going to touch on alcohol here and drinking and then I'm going to cover a topic that is probably the most important to me in a relationship and my present relationship and will be the most important factor for many of you 
uh, as you go forward with a relationship. But anyway, uh, alcohol, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of a lightweight and uh, don't drink that much. Uh, I have friends who call me up occasionally and say, hey, you want to go have a beer? And we'll have, we'll have a couple or a few beers, but usually it's over a course of time, so we're not, we're not getting drunk. Never liked getting drunk. I've had a few hangovers since uh, after I got out of college because I didn't really drink in college. And uh, my thought was, why would anybody want to do this more than once? Uh, some people have a much uh, higher tolerance for alcohol than uh, people like myself. She can probably handle, in fact, not probably, she does handle alcohol uh, better than me. And an interesting story she told me when she was 13 years old, her grandmothers took her aside and taught her how to drink, is the way she explained it to me. They gave her some shots of, uh, shots of rum, I think, and uh, so that she would know how it affected her. And being the, the kind grandmothers that they were. <laughs> and she said, yeah, she got, she got sick. She had a hangover. So then she understood what kind of a problem she would have if she went out with other kids and got drunk. Uh, so uh, she learned to control her drinking, and she does now. We go out, we have a couple beers, uh, a drink, and uh, she handles it, like I said, she handles it uh, probably better than I do. I think that the most important factor to me in my relationship is freedom. And uh, freedom to do what I do, to uh, have the time to work on, on the YouTube channel, uh, to do other things that I'm working on. Um, if I had somebody here hanging around me all day, every day, that would become almost impossible to do unless they became part of that team. And even then, um, I think I'm, uh, you know, I'm not a loner, but I, I tend to work the best alone. And uh, I've had this dis discussion with her and and uh, another girl or two that are early, very early on in a uh, relationship or meeting somebody is that I'm very independent. I've been very independent for most of my life. I'll probably all of my life, and uh, especially now that I am senior citizen, uh, I don't want somebody changing my life, locking me down, uh, so to speak. Uh, I've explained to her and others that uh, it's important for me to have the time and the freedom to go visit uh, other expats, other friends, occasionally travel with them. And uh, I enjoy traveling uh, with my girlfriend. We, we took seven days. We went to Bahol, had a good time together. And uh, I also asked her and, and told her, I said, well, you know, if you were going to travel by yourself, how would you, how would have you arranged the travel itinerary? And then I've told her how I would have done it different my, differently myself. I would have done a lot more exploring, although she was very active in exploring with me, going up in, in the mountain and, and hiking up into a waterfalls and uh, riding the motorbike. And, and she was uh, about half the time she drove the motorbike. And uh, she has the experience with that. Uh, so I have a good time with her, but also it's important for me to get away and uh, to visit my, my Western friends friends from uh, many of my subscribers from the Western countries, uh, the, the Americans, the, the other North Americans, the Canadians, uh, the Australians, a lot of Australians here, New Zealanders, uh, people from Sweden and Norway and uh, Belgium, many different countries, Germany, British uh, that I have met here. And it's important to go to the places where they may hang out and spend time uh, we have we have the except for the Australians we have pretty much the same language. Got to give the Australians a hard time. <laughs> you know I've I've got a friend who's Australian. I even have uh, a, a number of friends who are Australian. I have one Australian who can't understand the other Australian. Very difficult because of uh, the way that he speaks, the accent he speaks with. So it's not just me. And the same is true in the U.S., of course. We have many different regions with many different uh, accents. Uh, but anyway, she understands, and uh, 
occasionally she gets a little, she questions me maybe a little bit, but she gives me that freedom. And uh, for a while, I wasn't nearly getting in the walk time that I had been getting. And in the last couple of weeks, I have finally started walking more again. I Sometimes I, I'm out when she's home and, you know, she's wondering where I'm at, but I've told her I'm, I'm out walking. And uh, we uh, seem to have that agreement and uh, so far, so we'll see what happens. One last thing, of course, is language. Um, to communicate, what you'll find with uh, many Filipinos is that when they're with their friends or even in restaurants in the taxi, uh, sometimes I will start a conversation in English with a taxi driver, and uh, very quickly the, the, the two Filipinos start talking in Basaya here in Cebu, and I'm left out of the conversation. You will find that uh, to be a very frustrating experience. And uh, so part of, the, part of the training and teaching is you teaching them more proper usage of uh, English and also them teaching you how they use English and also uh, the local language, whatever it is, whatever part of the Philippines or another country that you live in. And I am slowly learning, and, and uh, this is the first girl who's actually taking the time to try to teach me to say words properly. And I'm slowly learning. And um, my, my tongue, my brain, my ears uh, don't always cooperate real well. But uh, it's important in order to understand more and more of their culture, what they're talking about. Anyway, I thank you for, uh, you know, it's really going back to the basics and with the relationship and uh, from the very start. Go back to the very start and uh, the, uh, the ABCs of a relationship, getting to know somebody, getting to know somebody better. And then you start making compromises and uh, they will train you, teach you, you will train them, teach you, uh, teach, you uh, teach them and... Uh, in the end, you'll live happily ever after, hopefully. Anyway, one, one of the mistakes, one of the warnings I'll have, and I've seen uh, people, it happens over and over, and uh, <laughs> within the first week or two of meeting somebody, they move them in, they let them move in. And the relationships and love happen very quickly here in the Philippines, probably other Southeast Asian nations as well. And uh, you move them in, and then you start realizing we really don't have that much in common. And then you start uh, getting frustrated because uh, they're moved in and they like where they're at. And they really don't want to move back out again. So I would just warn you to take some time in doing that. And uh, thank you very much for listening to me and watching. And uh, please like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Safe travels to you all wherever you're at, and I'll see you next time.